In episode 11 of the show, we finally got the moment that we were all waiting for. Since before season 6 even aired, we were made aware that Walter White and Jesse Pinkman would be making an appearance in the show, but we were unsure of in what capacity. In this week's episode, we got to see exactly why they were brought back and the value it added to the Better Call Saul storyline and character arc of Jimmy. With that, I thought I'd break down why I feel it was the right decision to bring them back and why it made sense to do so. So let's get into it. Here is why Walter and Jesse's return was so important to Better Call Saul Season 6. Just to let you know, this video will contain spoilers. Throughout the entirety of Better Call Saul, we'd always seen Gene as the product of his own wrongdoing and a repercussion for all of the actions that took place in Breaking Bad. He had to move away, form a new identity and lay low, leading a life that was drastically different to his life as Saul Goodman. And this was something that he did manage to do. But in episode 10 of season 6, we saw Gene reignite parts of his brain from his previous life that allowed him to carry out a scheme with Jeff in order to tie him to a crime and keep him quiet about knowing his true identity. But this had way more of a hold on Gene than he thought it would. In episode 11 of the show, we saw a Gene that had returned to his job at Cinnabon after touching base with his true identity when carrying out the scheme in episode 10. We saw that he was staring blankly ahead at the mixer, realizing that what he was doing right now was not the way that he saw his life playing out, and thus kicked off a way of being able to make a ton of money and reactivate the parts of him that he's good at. The return of Walter and Jesse in Better Call Saul was timed so perfectly in the episode that it supported the tone, mood, and direction of the character for the remaining two episodes that we've got left to come. We saw Gene carry out his first scam on his first victim in this persona of Victor, scamming people that work in finance out of their identity whilst teaming up with Jeff and Buddy to make it possible. As we saw the well-executed scene of the crime taking place with the score that suited the mood and accompanied the perfectly placed shots, we followed straight into the flashback of Walt and Jesse with Saul Goodman in the RV in the Breaking Bad timeline. We saw what followed on in Breaking Bad 208 after Saul gave them advice on what to do about Badger. After they placed a dollar in his pocket for client confidentiality, by the side of the grave dug to intimidate him. In the flashbacks, we saw him realize that the man standing in front of him was Heisenberg and that they run the operation from the RV. We also saw him state that he could also cut them a deal for $80,000 which would mean that Badger wouldn't have to take the rap and somebody else would be paid to do so. A conversation that we didn't see in Breaking Bad. We only saw it once the deal was cut and in discussion in Saul's office. There was no mention of it at all prior to that. The placement of the flashback scene in this episode was at a point where we saw Gene in the present day committing to a path of wrongdoing and carrying something out, meaning that there was no going back. Just like we saw in the flashback of Breaking Bad, the flashback was at a time where his life changed forever and was the beginning of the end for him. The start of the involvement for the very reason why he ended up as Gene. And in the present day, it was mirroring the same thing. The beginning of the end for Gene and the start of the spiral that's going to lead to his demise. The transition coming out of the flashback and into the present day was something that also represented the two timelines eventually leading to the same result. We had the grave that was dug for Saul in the flashback, transitioning into Gene lying there, fading over the top of it, highlighting that it's not going to end well for him. We know the final episode is titled Saul Gone, so that could mean that he may potentially die. We also saw the connection being supported in the flashbacks that didn't contain Walter and Jesse too. We saw Mike being the PI that was the person that investigated Walt and was the reason Saul ended up in his chemistry classroom in 208 of Breaking Bad as well, something we didn't know at the time. We witnessed Mike telling Saul to steer clear of him due to the fact that he believed he was an amateur and all it would do would be to get him caught by the authorities or another gang. But we saw Saul ignore Mike's word and go and cut a deal with him anyway, showing that he only really listens to himself. It was all leading to the final commitment of Saul to Walt that we saw in Breaking Bad where he got Walt to allow him to get on board where his life would then be changed forever. The closing shot of Saul walking up to the school was something that also symbolized that too. The moment where it all began and his life would then go on to be changed forever. Just like we saw in this episode in Gene's timeline where he decided to commit to go back to the life of crime. The similarities such as the burner phones, earpiece and the hiding of the money are all tying back to what we saw on our screens in Breaking Bad and was reminded of with the flashbacks in episode 11 too. Gene is also mirroring Walt's behavior in the early days of Breaking Bad. 
when he just wants to keep cracking on and isn't necessarily thinking of the consequences as much as he probably should. Waltz wanted to keep cooking in the early days, and we're seeing this with Jean. He wants to keep going and conning people no matter what cost or consequence, even on a terminally ill victim who Buddy wasn't prepared to steal from. This one is coming with higher risk due to the fact that so much time had passed, but he's still prepared to do it. It shows that Jean is in the same boat that Walt was in the start of Breaking Bad. He's doing it, isn't thinking of others, and just wants to make as much money as possible as he can, because he enjoys the buzz, and it's something that he's truly good at. Just like we know Walt cooks the best that there can possibly be due to his knowledge of chemistry, Gene, Jimmy, and Saul is the best con artist and talker that there's going. And the buzz, thrill, and excitement that he gets when he's doing it is something that is matched by nothing else in his life. Certainly not working at Cinnabon. Which is why we've seen him go back to this lifestyle after one small glimpse of returning to it in episode 10. Even the way that he was talking to Jeff, it was extremely similar to the way that Walt spoke to Jesse in giving it his all and being blindsided by the end result. The inclusion of Walt and Jesse marked the similarities between the two main characters from the different shows, and also the marking of the beginning of the end of Gene Tarkovic as we know him. It didn't end well for Jimmy, it didn't end well for Saul, and now I think we're going to most certainly see that it isn't going to end well for Gene. With one other inclusion of Walt and another inclusion of Jesse, there's still way more to come from the pair, where I'm hoping we may see some flashbacks that potentially occur later on in the Breaking Bad timeline that focus on the demise and link to Gene in the end. I also personally think that we will see Walt or Jesse with a connection to Kim that may provide some clarity on what she's been up to all of this time between Season 6 Episode 9 and the era of Breaking Bad. I can't wait to see how it ties in further and provides similarities that we're not even expecting yet. So, there you have it. Why Walter White and Jesse Pinkman's return was so important to Better Call Saul Season 6. If you want to see more videos on Better Call Saul such as Endings Explained, Theories and Predictions, and Character Breakdowns, then click on the i button. Or alternatively, you can head over to my channel where you'll find them all. If you want to give me a show or movie that you'd like me to review next, then head over to my Twitter, at BrainPilot underscore and tweet me what show or movie you'd like me to review. And finally, if you'd like to see what I rate the latest movies that don't quite make the cut to getting a dedicated video, then head over to my Letterboxd profile. It's where I rate the latest releases in real time. What did you think of The Return? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.